This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. Did you know that you can do ferrile or color work on any machine, even a non-patterning machine, even a machine that doesn't have extra feeders for two colors? This machine does have all those toys, but you may have a machine that doesn't, and almost any machine can be made to do this. The secret is to have a setting on your carriage that allows you to slip needles and knit only the selected needles. On my machine, the secret is to depress the two buttons called part. When those buttons are in, the only needles that will knit are the needles that are moved out forward toward your body. This ferrile on the sample I just showed you is diagrammed here on a piece of scratch paper. It is four stitches wide and repeats across as far as you want to pick out needles and it is five rows tall. So let's get started doing this the old-fashioned non-patterning way. My machine is threaded with the off-white yarn and I've knitted a few rows plain in the off-white yarn. What I need to do is pick out needles for this first bottom row and the first two stitches are going to be off-white and then there'll be a purple and then there'll be another off-white and it repeats. So it works out when I'm picking out my needles, two off-white, a purple, and another off-white. But because it repeats, I go back to the two off-white, purple, and another off-white. And you can see that that just works out to be three off-whites, skip one, three off-whites, skip one, three off-whites, skip one. And finally, at the right-hand end, I'm on this last needle, and it's going to be off-white, too. Now I have my two part buttons depressed, so when I knit to the right, it is only going to knit these needles I just pulled out. It skipped all these needles I didn't pull out. Now I'm going to park the yarn. I don't have a color changer installed on this machine. Again, I'm doing it the old-fashioned low-tech way. So here's how to park your yarn. Over at the far edge of your machine, unthread the yarn, hang the yarn under the edge of your machine, and it's parked. Now I'm going to do the second half of the first row by knitting from left to right again. So I'm going to go across without disturbing anything, and it'll do that because there are no needles selected. Then I'm going to thread the purple yarn, and I'm going to select the needles that I want to knit purple. And looking at my diagram, it's going to be the third needle in that group of four. Then there's a white, then it repeats two more whites, and then again it picks up, not that one. I have to count carefully, don't I? So not that one. For the purple, it's going to be this one, because this was my first group of four and then I have two white, and then this one, and then there's one more white. So it works out to be three needles back and one out for the purple color. And I'm going to go ahead and do the second half of this first row, knitting from left to right. And the machine only knits the purple stitches, which is fine. That's what I want. Now I'm on the right-hand side and I want to do the second row of the pattern. And if I examine the second row, counting from right to left, because I'm on the right, then what I'm going to do is say purple, white, purple, white. So, purple, white, purple, white, and I can even use my needle pusher to do that fast. So this rightmost needle and every other needle are going to be purple, and I'm already threaded with purple, so I'm going to do the first half of the second row by doing the purple part. Knitting right to left. And then I'm going to unthread the purple yarn and park it on my left. By the way, the purple yarn is in my upper left antenna, which is nice because I'm parking it on the left all the time. Now I need to get over to the right so I can do the second half of the second row, which is the white part. And over to the right and I put the white yarn in the machine 
and now I need to pick out the white needles. It's going to be second from the right and every other stitch thereafter. Those will be the white ones on the second row. And my machine does knit that. Now I've knitted the first two rows. I want to knit the third row. The third row, counting from the left because my yarn and my carriage are on the left now, the first stitch is purple, but I'm threaded with white. The second, third, and fourth stitches are white. So I'm going to bring out the second, third, and fourth needles and every one of these four stitch repeats. Now if your repeats are more complicated than mine, mark your needle bed where each repeat begins. That'll make it a little simpler for you to do the counting. For this third row, I do the first half of the row by knitting from left to right. And I've done the white part of this row. I've still got to get the purple in, so I must park my yarn. So I'm parking my white, making sure all my needles are back because if they're all in B position, the machine will free pass and not disturb anything. Then I can thread the purple and bring out the purple needles for this particular row. We're on the third row. So looking at the third row, I have one dark and three light. So I'm just going to pick out the stitches to be knitted in that fashion, thread it up with purple, and that will finish my third row. Now I want to do the fourth row, and I'm parked on the right and threaded with purple. So counting from the right, I want the rightmost stitch plus every other needle after that. Those are going to be knitted in the purple. That's the first half of the fourth row. To do the second half of the fourth row, I need to do a free pass. Just check my needles, make sure they're back. Go back over to the right and pick up that white yarn so I can do the second half of the fourth row. And now I'm going to get the second, fourth, and on across those stitches that I want to have white. Now I'm on the last row and my yarn is the white and my carriage is on the left so I'm going to read the last row from left to right. Two whites, a purple, a white. Two more whites, a purple, and another white. So it works out that every fourth actually gets brought out to be a purple. And I will thread up with the purple and park my yarn and knit across with the purple. Now that's it for the purple if I'm only making one row of these little diamonds. So I can cut that purple yarn, but I still have to finish the second half, that is the white half, of this last row four. So I slip back to the left, re-thread, and I'm going to hand pick the needles for that white part of that last row. Two here, needles one and two, and then needle four. And then one and two and four, one and two and four, which works out to be three out, one back. And I'll go ahead and go across with the white. Now, if I wanted this to be an isolated band of Fair Isle, I could just cancel the part and continue knitting with the off-white, which is what I'm going to do for this sample. Now I'm going to bind off and keep my sample, so I've loosened up my tension. For a loop through a loop bind off, you need to loosen your tension up by about five whole numbers. So it only works when you have a tight enough tension to begin with that you can make that last row comparatively much looser. Now I'm just um, using my latch tool to bind off here and then I will come back on camera and show you how this turned out. So here's our Fair Isle knitted the old-fashioned way.